All right. Thank you. So we recorded for the sake of those who watch us on YouTube. We upload these things. So welcome again uh, to our church service here. All right. And we welcome those who watch us online or offline. And uh, we pray that the Lord will bless you uh, through his word this morning. So as I mentioned that uh, I'll be maybe do a series maybe two Sundays, three Sundays, depending on, on how much we cover, all right? Uh, it's okay, the children never mind, let them run around, it's okay. We were like that before, maybe worse. <laughs> it's okay, man, all right? This is, uh, I don't put a protocol in the church, so uh, let them run around, it's okay. Um, to build a church through uh, giving, of course, we cannot run away by talking uh, finances. Uh, I want to mention a little bit also maybe the misconception of so many Christians um, in the churches when we talk about giving or we talk about money. Uh, money is very sensitive, right? Yeah, you can touch anything in my life, but don't touch my money. Uh, sometimes husband and wife like that also. You can touch anything, you know, but don't touch my money. Yeah. Where's my money? Where's my money? <laughs> All right, but um, we cannot run away from, from this life. Uh, money, actually money is second to God. Actually money can become a God in our life. So it's a matter of where do you put this uh, or prioritize this in your life. All right, so we want to talk a little bit about this. So uh, I will mention some uh, things that is close to us here, especially for the church uh, for the church members, all right? Um, but I try to generalize it also because uh, some, some people are watching us. But we, we will learn something from here, all right? In fact, when we uh, become a believer, become a Christian, uh, God wants us to surrender everything, not only your heart, not only your life, but everything in your life. And um, there is a principle in the Bible that so that we can understand this, all right? Understand this, all right? Now, when we talk about our church, uh, our church this year will be nine years, uh, nine years old, this church, all right? Uh, October, so I think we do a little bit of celebration this October like, because the pandemic came and also we, we cannot gather physically, social distancing, so we don't have for a few, I think two, three years, we don't have it now. But this year we will have it, all right? We will do a celebration, um, church anniversary. So we'll have big makan also uh, in October, all right? So I hope you will be here to help us eat, <laughs> uh, to help us, uh, I mean, to celebrate with us, <laughs> okay? To celebrate with us. So nine years, not too bad, all right? Pastor Joshua and Pastor Lita, of course, they're very long in the ministry, but they just started a church in uh, Sabah also. I was there uh, last week. Eh? I think, yeah, last week, 14, I was there, preaching there. All right? And uh, it's not easy to start a uh, church. So uh, I felt like I go back to about how many years last time? Maybe uh, 20 years or 20 years plus our church in Sabah yeah, with open air. No air condition, huh? We open. So Pastor Joshua opened the, the, what do you call that? The shutter. Called the open the shutter here. Open the shutter there. So we have uh, a lot of breeze. The wind coming through the, <laughs> the doors. So I was preaching there last week, right? All right. But we we pray with them that the Lord will furnish the uh, furnish the, the church. Uh, before I forget, we, we are giving them the curtain. We have a curtain here for our, because we changed this backdrop. So we have the yellow one, the golden yellow, and the red one. So we will give that to them, okay? All right, we give that to them for the curtain in the church. So make sure you, you pack it when Pastor Joshua come, so he can bring it back, all right? Uh, but but I, I am thinking and praying that we, we can help them, uh, to furnish the church so at least they can, you know, air condition come, they can worship uh, comfortably, all right? Maybe the carpet and all of that. So, yeah, nice place, nice place nearby their house. So it's not easy to start a church. We start this church also, not easy. We were, 
of course, before the pandemic came, uh, we have more people, but we dwindled down. Uh, pandemic really affected a lot of churches in Malaysia, including our church. Uh, some people don't want to come back to church and all. But uh, we are here. So we are nine years, and uh, we continue to serve the Lord and to build this church as a place of worship where people come and worship with us, all right? And um, all of us, we did well, I think, for, for the church members, those who supported us, the partners and the uh, our people who are supporting us, uh, the church people, the giving the offerings, tithing and all, all right? Some give sacrificially, all right? We did our best in these nine years. But this year, uh, we want to, to do more, all right? And um, how we do this, we need to build uh, one of the important area of the ministry or the church here that is in the area of giving. We want to build our finances. We, we are still okay here, but we are just, you know, barely have, barely, uh, you know, I mean, we can pay our bills and everything, but we want to do more. We want to do more, all right? So we want to build our uh, finances, our fund. Uh, all of this is part of our Christian life. It's part of worship, actually. Uh, as I mentioned many times, it is easy just to go to church. It is easy to come to church and sing. It is easy, right? But if you grow in the Lord and really uh, embrace and receive what God's purpose, yeah, last Friday we talked about the purpose, right? Uh, God's purpose in your life, then you have to be open to receive what God wants you to do. Because every one of us, we are called not only to believe in Jesus, but every one of us is called to serve Jesus. Uh, Jesus said, go and preach the gospel to every creature. All right? Go and preach. It means go and serve. Go and do something. All right? Uh, the misconception of many Christians is you become a Christian or you are a Christian, you must go to church. Well, that is true, very true. Christian must go to church. But it's more than that. Do you know that many Christians who go to church, they are not Christian? Even though they have gone to church for many years or every Sunday they go to church, but they are not believers, they are not Christian. How or why? Just look at their life, right? Paul, uh, I mean, Paul says in Titus, he said, they, they say they believe in God, but in their works, they deny Him. It means in their life, in their lifestyle, in what they do, they deny Him. A lot of people go to church, but in their life every day, they deny God. They are not living for Him. So that is the difference. All right, so we need to be uh, a believer who are really a true believer. Not only a, a Christian who go to church, but a Christian who really live for God. And living for God is serving the Lord. That's why in church we call this church service. Because we come to serve. How? By fellowshipping with one another encouraging one another, all right? We are spurring or stirring one another to love God more or to be faithful uh, to the Lord. We come to church, we give our offering, not, not, not giving because every church service we, people give, so we also give, all right? But we give because we understand something. We want to build, we want to... Uh, Build God's house, God's work, God's ministry. We want to be a part of God's mission. That is the heart of God. We understand. That's why we do. We give. We give our tithes. We support. We remember the church. We remember the ministry. We remember the work. That there is a church. There is a, a, a work of God that we need to build. You know, there's a lot of things I want to mention here. So many. In the Bible, you see everything. And um, actually, in this area of giving, God put emphasis, actually, in the life of a 
Christian who really understand and who really wants to serve and to build the work. That's why I put this title today, I am my church builder. That's my title. I am my church builder. I don't only go to church, but I have a purpose. I understand. I have a purpose, uh, a very intentional purpose. I come because I want to build a church. So uh, actually, in every aspect in our life, when we come to church, we need to, 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 we need to take care of the fellowship, the church. That's why, uh, of course, we build uh, God's work, but we need to be careful also with our, how we live, how we fellowship, how we talk, right? Uh, our actions and all, because it will affect uh, the, the, the ministry or affect the, the church, right? But we focus on this, about this giving. So one important area to, uh, for us to be able to be a builder, to build God's work or the, the ministry or the house of God is in the area of giving. Now, <clears throat> you know, when we talk about giving, it's a very sensitive thing. And um, actually, a lot of pastors um, avoid, try to avoid in talking about this. So they call somebody, they bring a guest speaker to come, because people tend to listen more to guest speakers than the pastor himself. But let us turn that around, amen? Let's turn that around. You need to listen to your pastor more than the guest speaker. Because the pastor in the church, he is the father in the house. He is your shepherd. And he is the one who is leading you, teaching you the word of God. Not for his benefit, but for your benefit. Because when he teaches you the word and you apply the word, when you obey the word, you will be blessed. You will benefit. And that is what parents do. Parents will raise up their children. They will teach them. They will lead them. They will guide them. So that the children will benefit. And the children will grow well. When they grow well, they grow mature. Then the children will be a blessing to the parents in the future. Amen. Say, all the parents say amen. <laughs> and that is in the church. We have a shepherd. We call it a pastor. The pastor means shepherd or leader that will teach the word, that will guide, you know, uh, bring a good and healthy counsel from the word so that the members will grow and they will obey the word and they will be blessed. All right? So, um, yeah, maybe I'm taking a uh, risk sometimes uh, to, to share this thing, but I feel it's very, very important. Very, very important. Now, if you want to hear a personal question, if this is your church, if you imagine that this is your church, of course, the church member... This is your church. You know, if a personal question, are you giving to your church? You know, yeah, every Sunday I give, but are you really giving to the church? You know, sometimes we plan what we give. Are you giving regularly? Are you giving generously? Are you giving sacrificially? You know, uh, some people in the church, they are, they are giving generously, but not only generously, but they give sacrificially. You know, sometimes we give until we feel the pain in giving, you know. This morning I was thinking, wow, my, my bank account is like a stock market, sometimes up, sometimes down, right? So some people, they, their bank account, of course, is always up, right? It's always up, stays there. But sometimes the ministry is like that. Uh, those of us who serve the Lord, um, we experience like that. So sometimes our heart is very calm, but sometimes it's Pumping very fast. Oh, the thing is going down. <laughs> so our prayer also, sometimes when the finance is stable, while well, we pray very relaxed. Oh, Lord, thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. <laughs> but then when the finance goes low, low, very low, then your prayer also will change, right? Lord, hallelujah, Lord, I need something. I need this. All right, so we experience that, all of that in, in the ministry. Number two, what is your attitude when you give? When you give, what is your attitude when you give? Do you feel the responsibility? Do you feel joy? Do you feel it's a ministry? All right? 
Do you feel when you are giving to God, do you feel it? You know, sometimes we feel the pain of giving to God. Are you giving your tithes, your offering, or mission? We have mission here every end of the month. We collect mission because we are supporting a church. I hope we can support more. Actually, I want to support the church in um, Myanmar and our wonderful pastor. You know, they experienced some problems there uh, with the politics and all. But they, they really serve the Lord, all right? Even sometimes quite dangerous, yeah? But they still serve God. They're very on fire. So I, I wait for the time when we have more in our mission fund and maybe we can also help them. Um, even just a little bit, just, just for the pastor and, and the family, you know, not even for his church, but for him. Because the pastor uh, and his family, there are children staying in their house. I think how, how many? 14, 16? Uh, you know, it's like an orphanage. So they pick up these children from other uh, cities, from other village, you know, so house them in their house. So very big family and a small house. Actually, uh, want to support them. At least buy bags for the children or cushion. The other day we went there. We see their cushion is quite old and, you know, become thin. Because, uh, so, you know, maybe for their food. So maybe we, we do little things that we, we can do. But we need to build here. We need to build our finances here so that we can do more for these people. All right. I just came back from Sabah uh, the other day. My friend, they're doing this uh, outreach. They build centers, learning centers, many in the church. Of course, they do a lot. All right. Uh, he said in one month, we, we need how many thousands of ringgit? But he said there are some people who are helping, supporting him. Some of them even just few ringgit only, they're supporting them. But this is a big ministry, right? Some, they, they, they're feeding the children from Monday to Friday before the classes. That is money to run the ministry. And uh, for the salary of those teachers, they have a lot of centers, so sometimes in my heart, when, when people share like that, I also want to help. But we don't have anything. How to help? So just pray for you. <laughs> you know. We can do many. But we need to build our finances. And when you're giving to the church, what is your experiences in the blessing? Because I really believe when you are giving to God's word, God will bless you. And that is for sure. He will bless. He will work. All right? All right. So when we talk about giving or finances, we give to the church. Actually, there are two reasons. Many, maybe, may, maybe there's a lot of reason, but I pick up two reasons, which I feel uh, very obvious, very clear. Two reasons. Number one is worship. Number two is ministry. Why we give to God? Why we give our tithes? Why we give offerings? Why we give maybe extra or donations? Why we give? Sometimes God move your heart to give. Why? Because of these two reasons. One is worship. Two is ministry. All right? So worship. The word worship comes from the word worship. It's God's word. He is worthy to receive our worship. He is worthy to receive our praise. He is worthy. The word worship means to prize something. To prize something above everything else. That is worship. Not necessarily that you will have a object or uh, a statue or an idol. Then you say that is idol worship. You know? But whatever you prize something that is above everything else, that is worship. Right? To means to honor, honor the thing of uh, to give honor to the thing of the highest importance, and to act accordingly. Worship is when we give our deepest affections and the highest praise to something. That is worship, and that is what we do to God. True worship of God is when we love Him with all our heart. Our soul, our mind, our strength. It is when we prize God above everything else 
and put him first in our hearts. That is true worship. Worship of God. Or we worship God. That's what Deuteronomy 6 verse 4 and 5 says. So if you have your Bible, you can go to Deuteronomy uh, 6 verse 4 and 5. If not, you just listen to this verse. It says here, the Lord, our God, the Lord is one. The Lord our God, the Lord is one. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul, with all your strength. That is worship. To love God with all, all, all your heart, all your mind, all your strength is that is how we worship God. That is how we love God. So coming to church is, is more than that. To believe in Jesus, to worship God, to believe in God is more than just coming to church. It's with all your heart, with all your mind, with all your strength. All right? With all. With all of you. Now true worship becomes easy <clears throat> when we recognize that God owns everything and God owns us. <laughs> um, you know, in the world today, people don't believe God anymore. And, and this kind of attitude, this kind of thinking is, you know, creeping into the church. Even a lot of Christians, they don't really believe in God. Church is just a, uh, a place where it's like a, what do you call that, a routine, um, a religious motion, all right? It's not, it's not a reality, you know? They don't believe. Um, the other day we were talking about some Christian school or mission school. It's supposed to be a Christian school, all right? But about 70, 80% of the students don't even have faith in God. They argue. No, children nowadays are very, very clever. Okay? So they argue about the existence of God. Uh, even some teachers are very afraid to answer them. They don't know how to answer them because of their question. Uh, people don't believe God anymore. Uh, people believe that they are God. They, you know, they can do without God or they can live without God. But I pray and I want to encourage us, please do not fall into that kind of thinking. Amen. God's still there. He needs to be worshipped. He is in control. All right. If you don't believe that, at the end of the day, you are going to face him. That is for sure. Because the Bible says so. At the end of the day, we will stand before him. Because the Bible says everyone will stand before God. And to give account of what they have done in their life. So through worship uh, will become easy when we recognize that God owns everything and God owns us. He owns you. He is the one who created you. Uh, even though many people in the world today, they don't believe that. Okay, so that's why church is important. The Bible is important. We need to be convicted, convinced that this is the word of God because this is the only thing that can put you in a safe place in the matter of your faith. Right? You will be safe. Now, our giving is important for our worship. You cannot come to church without giving or you cannot live without giving to God. Your money, your time, your er energy, your service, all of you, all of us, everything that we have, our life, we cannot say, I believe in God and we are not giving to God. So giving is important. In Proverbs chapter 3, verse 9 and 10, he said, honor the Lord, in the King James, honor the Lord with the, with your, the substance, um, but this one is from the contemporary English so that it can uh, make us to uh, understand easy. So contem contemporary English version says, Honor the Lord by giving him your money. They are very clear, God. <laughs> All right? Um, honor the Lord or worship the Lord 
by giving him your money and the first part of all your crops. Crops, today it means income. Yeah, your crops, your income. In verse 10 he said, Then you will have more grain and grapes than you will ever need. So honor the Lord with your substance and the first fruits of your increase. That's what the Bible says. So honor the Lord by giving him your money and the first part of all your crops. So, you know, the Bible, there are, there are many scriptures that talk about this. Honor the Lord with your substance. Honor the Lord with your wealth, with your money. You know, because God is the one who gives you the ability to generate all this income. Say amen. All right, your life itself, your breath, every morning you wake up, you're still breathing, and you take your shower, you go to work, you know, from morning until the evening, with all that strength, your mind, your, your wisdom, you know, your creativity, your ability, your strength to sustain the whole day until you come home, the next day you wake up again, still alive, and do work, at the end of the month you receive, you know, God, you owe everything to God. Have we ever thought those people who are bedridden in the hospitals, those people who are bedridden in their houses, those who are paralyzed, those who are sick in their houses, they cannot do anything that people have to serve them and feed them. They don't have the ability to go to work and generate income and receive salary every month. Are you not thankful that you have this good health and good life. You still can do business, do work, generate income. Are you not thankful to God? Compared to those who are sick and bedridden. Or maybe those people who are going through dialysis. <laughs> it's, it's a tough life. But we praise God we are still healthy. We still do. Say amen. That's why we honor God with our giving. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Keep me healthy. Keep me strong. Give me a strong body. I think giving is very important that, that God pay attention to this. You know, one day Jesus went to the temple and he sat there. Jesus did not only go to the temple and sit down there and preach and teach or worship. But very interesting, Jesus in the temple, he was sitting there and he was observing how people give their money to God. In Mark chapter 12, 41 to 42 or 44, Jesus was sitting there and a lot of people were giving the offering. You know, last time the offering, we, they don't do like what we did, we pass around the bag or go around with the bag, collect offering like that. People go into the temple last time because their money were coins, silver coins, gold coins. So they have these coins. So when they go to the temple, there is a box. They call it a chest box there, and they will pour the op offerings in that box. So those who are loaded, those who are rich, those who want attention, you know, to let people know that they have a lot of money and all, they will pour their coins or they lift it up more higher so that the coins drop and more sound. So people in the temple will turn, who is that? Who is that? Wow, that's a rich guy. Wow. <laughs> but this time, Jesus was sitting there and there was a widow. A poor widow came quietly. Maybe nobody even noticed her. But Jesus noticed her when Jesus was sitting there. So this poor widow came to the temple. And the Bible says she has only two coins. Two coins. Two mites. Two coins. Actually that was enough just for her meal at that time. But she decided to give it to God. And she put it there. Nobody even heard the sound of the coin dropped in the box. But Jesus noticed it. 
When people giving offering to God in that box, Jesus did not say anything. But when this poor widow gave, the Bible says, with all that she had, that is the thing that caught Jesus' attention. So, I think giving is very important that Jesus had to sit down there and observe it. How people give. And how, how do we give to God? Very, very important, right? So God owns everything, and everything we have is from him. So let's honor him with what we have. In Psalm 50, verse 10, it says, for all, uh, let me read 24 first. Psalm 24, verse 1. Uh, this scripture speak about that God's own everything, and everything that we have comes from him. Psalm 24 verse 1, he said, The earth is the Lord's and everything in it and the world and all the people and all its people belong to him. So we belong to God. Everything, the Lord, uh, the earth is the Lord, means this earth belongs to God. He is the one who created this world. The world did not come out from a big bang. You know, I mean, if you know the Bible, then you read about the big bang. It's a... It, I don't know, but for me, I feel it's so funny how people come up with that kind of idea, all right? The big bang. It's just bang, and then things happen, you know? Is there such a thing? That is what the, uh, uh, the genius people of the world came, up, came out with, that big bang. But the Bible clearly says, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. So that is the statement of the Bible. So he said, here he said, the earth belongs to the Lord and everything in it, everything in this world belongs to God, all right? Every, every one of us, we are just a, what I call a steward has been entrusted to us, all right? Nations, presidents, kings, or the wealthy people, the rich people here, you know, those who own the, uh, the oil uh, in the different parts of the world, all of these people, they are just stewards. God entrusted them. Does not belong to them. The world does not belong to them. The oil that does not belong to them. God created everything. The gold, the silver. People have to dig it in the ground. <coughs> Alright? But who put it there? God created everything. Men discover it and make money out of it. So he owns everything. Psalm 50 verse 10, he said, For all the animals of the forest are mine, God said. I own the cattle on the thousand hills. <coughs> Romans 11 36, For everything comes from him and exists by his power and is intended for his glory. All glory to him forever and ever. First Chronicles 29, I love this verse. First Chronicles 29, verse 13 to 14. He said, now, this is David. David was praying uh, because he <coughs> handed over the kingdom to his son Solomon. He said, now, our God, we give you thanks and praise your glorious name. David said, but who am I and who are my people that we should be able to give as generously as this? Everything comes from you. David recognized this. He said, God, everything comes from you, and we have given you only what comes from your hand. So everything that we give to God, our offering and all, actually it comes from God. So <clears throat> the principle is like this. God's provision comes to us. He provides. Then we return to him. You know, if you are faithful to that, then his provision will keep on flowing in your life. Don't break the flow. Say amen. James chapter 117, he said, every good gift and every perfect gift is from above. Um, coming down from the Father of lights, with whom there is no variation or shadow due to change. And last verse, 1 Corinthians 1.30. But of him are ye in Christ Jesus, who of God is made unto us wisdom, righteousness, sanctification, and redemption. Um, 
the other translation said the message bible says everything that we have the right thinking the right living a clean slate and a fresh start comes from god by way of jesus christ so god owns everything that's why giving has two reason one is worship and i touch this part about worship everything comes from god so what we give actually comes from him we are just returning a portion to god when we give back to god we are telling god god i am thankful i appreciate what you have given me and i return this offering or this token as a sign that i recognize and i acknowledge that what i have comes from you say amen we owe everything not only everything comes from god but we owe everything to god you know when god created men before he created adam and eve god has prepared everything he created the universe and then he created the earth <coughs> he created a garden and he put man in the garden the garden of eden but before god put man in the garden of eden god has prepared everything for man everything is there god did not put man in the earth and he said oh you know i leave you here and you do everything what you need you just do it you know but god put everything all right the garden everything in this world you know when 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 god put adam and eve in this earth wow just imagine the whole world belongs to them even the animals have to sub, be sub, in subjection to adam and eve adam has to give them names all right just imagine the monkey come to adam and then adam said your name will be gorilla Yes boss <laughs> your name will be orang utan all right adam give names to them they were in subjection to adam interesting right because during that time adam don't eat animals they eat only herbs there were there were peace in the earth right living in harmony animals also living in harmony men only eat herbs that's why god said you can eat all the trees in this garden but don't eat from this tree so god prepared everything genesis chapter 1 and 2 when the children of israel entered the promised land god has prepared everything for them Right we don't have to uh we don't have time to read all this but I just mentioned to you in Deuteronomy 6 verse 10 to 15 Joshua 24 13 God said I've given you the promised land when you, when you enter the promised land <coughs> you will own everything houses that you did not build vineyard that you did not plant all these things that you you did not build God said I've given them all to you So before God bring them into their promised land. God has prepared everything. That's why we owe everything to God. Uh God gave us power to get well. Deuteronomy 8:18. He said God said when you go into the land you have all this blessing. He said God said be careful with your heart that your heart is not lifted up thinking that you are the one who acquired this. God said don't forget that it is god who gives you the power to get well it means god give you the ability the wisdom the creativity god give you the life the strength to get well all right our even our breath belongs to god every day every day we breathe is interesting right and people don't appreciate the air that we have the breath that we have 
Some people, when they get sick, you go to the hospital or specialists and all of that, they give you oxygen, you have to pay, you know, but now we have free. So enjoy it and honor God with it. Say amen. So thank you, Lord, for the bread. Our bread belongs to God. Daniel 5.23. Jesus gave his life so that we might live. If without Jesus, then we are nothing. Right? That's why we need to have Jesus. We need to believe Jesus. Because Jesus died so that you, you may have life. Not only life here, but life after this. What is the purpose? What is the point? Living here, maybe you are wealthy, rich, and everything. You have everything, but after you die, you have nothing. And on, the, on, the, on top of that, you are not in heaven. You'll be in hell because you don't have Jesus. Right? So we owe everything to God. We need to praise and worship God because he gave us his son, Jesus, so that you will have life and life eternal in Christ. Everything we have comes from God, First Chronicles 29. And um, the Bible says we need to be a faithful steward of what God has given to us. Actually, giving in the church, finances and all, is just a little portion that we give to God. Now, number two, talk about ministry, but I will not go into this uh, so much. I will continue next week. Continue next week. So giving is has two reasons. Number one is worship. Why? Because God uh, created everything. Everything belongs to God. And we belong to God. God owns everything. And God owns us. So if we understand this truth, then giving is not a problem. Because you know you are giving back what belongs to God. You are returning a portion what God has given to you. And God owns you. All right? But if, if you really, truly born again and really re have this life of God in you, giving is not a problem. So giving is worship. We honor God. Number two is ministry. We give because ministry. What is ministry? Service. We serve God. We do ministry. So God actually put this giving or pay attention to this giving, put emphasis into this giving in the ministry, in the church, because it is a service. We are serving God. That's why I asked the personal question, are you giving to your church? Because if you give for the sake of giving, that is not ministry. But if you give because you understand you have a purpose. You know that I am a builder of God's church. I am serving God. Then when you give with that kind of attitude, then that is a ministry. And actually, I want to read this to you. That put, God put emphasis on that because why? It's a ministry. And the Bible says you need to excel in this ministry. 2 Corinthians 8 verse 7. Paul was commending the uh, believers in Corinthians because God has blessed them so much with spiritual gifts and wisdom and everything. So let's listen to what Paul says. Paul says to them, 2 Corinthians 8, 7, he said, but since you excel in everything, like many people today, they excel in everything. Since you excel in everything, in faith, in speech, in knowledge, in complete earnestness and in the love we have kindled in you, see that you also excel in this grace of giving. So Paul tell the people, the church of the Corinthians, he said, you excel in everything, but make sure that you also excel in this grace of giving. Some translation says, in this ministry of giving. Giving is a ministry. So before we close, I will continue this next week because a lot of things to share here, but I just want to close with this. Are you serving the Lord? Or are you living a life of service to God? Is giving a ministry to you? Right? 
That's how we build the work. We build the church. Or that's how we live our Christian life. I met uh, uh, somebody in KK the other day, so I was just talking to him. He said, Pastor, you know this pastor? I said, yeah, I know, th- I know him. <laughs> I don't have to mention the name. Like I, I know him for a long time. He said, yeah, Pastor, I've been with him also for a long time. He said, Pastor, I was a supporter of his ministry for many years. So he said, when I was working in Dubai, I financed his ministry. Oh, I said, that's interesting. <laughs> interesting, right? So this guy, he took this man's ministry as his ministry. So while he was still working in Dubai, he was financing the ministry of this man. But now he came back. So now he joined the mission. <clears throat> he joined the mission. He's no more in Dubai. But I think that is interesting. Sometimes we can do that. I want to mention that next week. Some people did that. Like the ladies that follow Jesus. Right? Some of the Marys that follow Jesus. They supported Jesus' ministry. They financed Jesus' ministry. Right? The people of Philippians. The people of Thessalonians. They were financing Paul the Apostle's ministry. Right? So there are some uh, people in the Bible. David financed Solomon's ministry by building the temple. He prepared all the materials, the gold, the silver, the finances, so that Solomon can build the temple. Right? King Darius, uh, when he allowed the people to go back to uh, their, their land, even provided for them. Nehemiah times. So there's, there's a lot in the Bible. Sometimes we can do that. We can take giving as a ministry to finance the ministry. Maybe not all, but maybe some part of it. Maybe a portion of it. All right? So we can do that. But I want to encourage you today. Be, uh, be a generous giver. Take giving as a ministry. That is your, maybe you are not preaching the gospel. Maybe you are not going for mission. Maybe you are not involved in any <coughs> area of the ministry in the church. But you can take uh, giving as a ministry because we all serve the Lord. Not all people in the church are wealthy and having finances. Not all. But those who have, you finance the church. You give to the Lord. You're doing it because you are serving God. Say amen. You are serving God. That is what we do. And God is looking at you. God sees that. And he's the one who will reward you because you are doing it for him. You are doing it for him. All right. So I want to encourage you today to be faithful, be generous with your giving to the Lord. Uh, actually, I want to share you a, a, a PowerPoint, but maybe I'll reserve that for next week. All right? I'll reserve that for next week, but maybe this, this morning is enough for this. So today is a different. Usually we preach and, you know, I, I do preach and give uh, inspiring message, you know, but sometimes we need to uh, do something that is close to home uh, because there's some things that we need to do and we want to progress and also this is really important, I believe. All right? Praise God. Now, I want us to um, close in prayer and uh, invite you all to stand with me as we close in prayer this morning. Hallelujah. Praise God. Say, thank you, Jesus. All right. So this is what we are here. We worship God. We, uh, especially in the services in our life, we, we, we relate with God with reality, right? We don't just have a belief in God, but really uh, a living faith. So we relate with God with reality. We know he is here. He is active. His presence is here. So we talk to him like that, all right? So those who are watching us online, I, I believe God is speaking to you, all right? Listen to the message again in YouTube. You can find it in the YouTube. We will upload that by tomorrow. And listen again if you want to, uh, to be inspired. But let us be a church builder, all right? Today we talk about I am my church builder. So I want to build God's work. I want to build God's church. So let us be that kind of people. 
to build the work of God. Let's pray and let us close the service this morning. Thank you, Father. We bless you. Thank you, Lord. Lord, we thank you for your word. Lord, we thank you for speaking to us today. We thank you. Yes, Lord, we want to acknowledge, we recognize that you own everything. Even you own our life. We belong to you. This earth belongs to you. Everything that we have belongs to you, comes from you. And when we give unto you, we are giving what you have given to us. As a token of worship, thanksgiving, Lord, to acknowledge and to recognize that you are the one who give us everything. We thank you for the bread that we have. We thank you for the strength that we have. We thank you for the life. We thank you for good health. We thank you for the wealth that you have given us. The finances, the money. Lord, we thank you for the ability, the creativity that we can use it, Lord, to work, to generate income in our life. We thank you. All of this is from you. You are the one who has given us life and strength. You are the one who, uh, who has given us good bodies, <coughs> good health. You are the one. And Lord, we want to thank you for that. We, we want to honor you with that. Lord, we, we don't want to be puffed up. We don't want to be prideful. But we want to be humble before you. Acknowledging that you are the Lord. You are the God who owns everything. And you are the one who owns our life. We worship you. Uh, we pray, Lord, that you help us <coughs> so that we can build your work. You can build your church with what we have in our life. Lord, we want to take giving as a ministry. When we give, we are serving the Lord. When we give, we are doing ministry. We thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord, for this. We give you praise and glory. Pray that you bless your people throughout this week, we pray. Bless them, be with them, guide them, we pray. In Jesus' name, everybody say amen. Amen. <coughs> amen. God bless you. Uh, Uh, next week, the one is next week. Yeah, God bless you and um, enjoy your lunch. Yeah, uh, don't rush home, but uh, just stay back and enjoy the lunch together. All right, God bless you. Thank you for coming. Thank you for being here. God bless you. <coughs>